In this video, I'm going to cover the format of the exam and go through an example question to show you what it's going to be like and how I would expect you to approach answering it. So by the end, you should understand the format of the questions, understand how to go about analyzing it, and understand how to actually answer the question. The exam itself has five questions with two to three parts in each. The exam total points are 100. It lasts for two hours and it's worth 50% of your unit marks. It's closed book, so you're not allowed to have any information, notes or other material to refer to. And each question will indicate the amount of time that you should spend on that question. So essentially look at the number of points for each question, they vary a little bit, and then work out how much time you should spend. In this example, the scenario is set out for you. So each question will set out a scenario, and then we'll ask you questions about that scenario. So in this particular one, a Swedish hacker, Lisbeth Sander, has found a zero day in Windows 11. She wants to communicate it to Satya Nadella, who's the CEO of Microsoft, directly via PGP, which is a public key encryption program. Nadella has never met Salander and has never used open source software before, and, but has downloaded PGP. Both Salander and Nadella know journalist Stephen Levy. Salander has the correct keys for Levy. So the question continues and says, using your knowledge of public key encryption, describe a sequence of messages to get Salander the key she needs to communicate with Nadella. When answering this, consider, one, what key did Salander need to communicate with Nadella? How could Salander trust that she had the correct key from Nadella? In all these communications, Salander wanted all communications to be encrypted and to be sure that the people could trust the sender's identity. So three, describe how Salander, Levy and Nadella could know with certainty that the sender of an email was the person that they claimed to be. So the key things here are that we're going, being asked to consider public key encryption and describe how that essentially works and then work out what keys they need to have to be able to communicate with each other. And given that they have never met before, um, how can they do that using a third party who is Stephen Levy? So the background to this is that the question is referring to public key encryption, where every participant has a public and a private key. And just to remind you, encryption requires that the sender uses the receiver's public key to encrypt the message and the receiver um, to, uses their private key to decrypt the message. Digital signatures, on the other hand, can be used to provide proof of identity and they require that the sender use their own private key to sign the message and that the receiver can check the identity of the sender by using the sender's public key. For this to work, however, the sender and receiver need trusted copies of each other's public keys, which they can get using a web of trust if they have never met each other face to face. So the ideal situation is that they know each other and they've exchanged public keys person to person. But if they can't do that and they need to get it from somewhere else, they need somebody else to vouch for it. So at the start, we have Lisbeth Salander, who has her own private and public key, and also knows Stephen Levy, um, and so she has Stephen Levy's uh, public key. Stephen Levy has uh, his own private and public key, but he also has Lisbeth Salander's public key and Nadella's public key. Nadella has his private and public key and has Levy's public key. So they can communicate both on the right, Lisbeth Salander and Nadella can communicate with Stephen Levy, but they can't communicate with each other because they don't have each other's public keys. At the end, what we're trying to do is basically get to the point where each have the um, each other's public keys and they can trust that the public keys that they've got actually came from um, the person that they said they came from. 
So when we're asked to describe a sequence of messages, that's what we're really going to do. So it starts off with Salander sending a signed and encrypted message to Levy asking for Nadella's public key and requesting that he give Nadella her public key. The, the message that Salander sends to Levy is signed using her private key and encrypted using Levy's public key. Levy decrypts that message using his private key and checks the signature using Salander's public key. Levy responds with a signed and encrypted message, including Nadella's public key. The message is signed using Levy's private key and encrypted using Salander's public key. Salander decrypts the message using her private key and checks the signature using Levy's public key. She still wants to check the message, and this is sort of important because uh, essentially, even though it's in response, it still could have come from some other party. Levy then sends a signed and encrypted message to Nadella, including Salander's public key. The message is signed using N Levy's private key and encrypted using Nadella's public key. Nadella then decrypts the message using his private key and checks the signature using Levy's public key. And then both S uh, Salander and Nadella will have each other's public keys and then they can communicate with each other. Now there's a couple of variants here in terms of the exact flow, but this is um, the, probably the most straightforward uh, sequence of messages that will get each other's public keys. There wouldn't have been any point in Salander saying, sending a message directly to Nadella because he wouldn't have had any way to trust that um, the uh, public key that she sent uh, was in fact the public key. So they're trusting that they get it from Levy in a secure way. So the question asks to consider some specific things. And when questions ask you for specific things, it really is worth um, actually just making sure that you have answered it specifically. So the question was, what key did Salander need to communicate with Nadella? And the answer is Salander needed Nadella's public key. Nadella needed Salander's public key. So they each needed each other's public keys. The second part of it was how could she trust that she had the correct key from Nadella? Uh, she uses the principles of the web of trust. Salander trusted Levy and had Levy's public key. She trusted Levy to vouch for Nadella's key. Ideally, Levy would have got Nadella's public key in person or some other way, in fact, using the web of trust himself. In all these communications, Salander wanted all communications to be encrypted and to be sure that the people could trust the sender's identity. Describe how Salander, Levy and Nadella could know with certainty that the sender of an email was the person they claimed to be. Well, we do this by using digital signatures and that they all could verify that the person sending the message was who they claimed to be. This worked because they had verified the public keys that they could be used to check the digital signatures of the messages. So when answering, always remember to answer what you've been asked. If you are asked questions or parts of questions, it's always worth actually putting a little heading or something to say which part of the question you're referring to. Sometimes if you just write paragraphs of, of text in a response, it's very actually very hard to see which bit of that answer refers to which bit of the question. So make it easy on the markers to give you those marks by making sure that you highlight those. So that's it. I hope the exam goes well for you. Remember that going into that exam, if you've finished all the lab and project work, uh, then passing the unit is not really a problem, but you should be able to do well in the unit and I hope you all do that. Thanks very much.